why, guys, Alan's worked really hard on this. Like, you are working on yours. Wait till Trevor sits. Come on, guys. So sit down. You're doing the reverse. Why are we doing this? Hurry up, sit down. Why are you recording already? I don't know. Wow. Shh. Let's go, Alan. I might be in favor of national health care if it required all Democrats to get their heads examined. Though these words of American journalist Ann Coulter may seem harsh, this heated controversy has been the subject of debate in Washington, D.C. Ever since President Obama has signed the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, there have been opponents who want it torn down. Even as I speak, there are people for and against this plan. And you may think to yourself, health care is for adults to worry about. However, this, this plan is for the future and will affect our generation the most. To put this into perspective, imagine if the school took all our grades, averaged them out, and then gave it in the same grade to everyone. That's what the government is trying to do with our health care. And I think it's unfair. I, I always want to go in the medical field. However, with this new reform, it may negatively, in, negatively impact doctors and hospitals. Thus, in the best interest of our nation, the U.S. government should repeal the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Through extensive research, I conclude that the act is unconstitutional, it will increase the cost of health care services, and lower the quality of care. To show you what I mean, here is um, a YouTube clip on an analogy of what it's like. The National Public Radio piece on Obamacare substituted the words public plan with public airplane to illustrate the wonders of government controlled health care. This no frills government air wouldn't offer meals, movies, or pillows, but NPR claims they would get all of their passengers to Healthyville, just like the private airplane. <laughs> really? Here's a public airplane that's subsidized by taxpayers and not subject to the same rules as a private airplane. The private plane has to pay its own way by attracting customers and providing good service. So which plane will fill up first? Duh. Since government air must take everyone at the lower cost, they'll quickly start to run out of money, and they'll have to cut their costs. Pilots, let's start by slashing your pay. Sorry, old-timer, you've already been to Healthyville. Critically sick person? Eh, you probably wouldn't have survived the trip anyway. Want to switch back to the private airline? Sorry, your employer chose the government air public option, and the private airlines are no longer allowed to issue individual tickets. Looks like the public option is now your only option. We hope you enjoyed your flight on government air. But if you believe in responsible health care reform, join us. talk about health care reform, first we have to talk about what it means. Health care reform is basically a change in the government policy on our nas national health care system. And the current, most current health care reform was signed by o President Obama. It's called the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, also PPACA. The federal role in health care has varied through the centuries. However, it wouldn't be until the Kennedy years that serious reform would occur. That's when he added the amendments of Medicare and Medicaid. Medicare is basically national health care for the elderly, and Medicaid is for the poor. Jump ahead to the Clinton era. There he also promised national health care reform, but it faltered and it quickly lost public interest. And now it's President Obama's turn, and he quickly signed the PPACA to legislation last March. However, there are many flaws to this uh, act. First, the, to begin, the act is unconstitutional. There have been many lawsuits against this PPACA challenging the constitutionality of the individual mandate, which requires by 2014 that individuals must carry insurance or pay a fine of up to $2,085. The most recent uh, court ruling was by U.S. District Judge Roger Vinson, who declared the whole law void because 
the individual mandate violated, violated the Constitution's Commerce Clause. Other, in, other uh, law through companies, such as Liberty Council, which raise other constitutional challenges, such as the Tenth Amendment, which uh, delegates all rights not for the federal government, for the state, such as the national health care system. And then the Establishment Clause prohibits the preferring one religion over the other. However, that's what the Act is doing by giving opt-out provisions for recognized religions while not giving them to other orthodox religions. This discrimination also violates the Equal Protection and the Free Exercise Clause. But enough of this law stuff. It all, the Act will also increase the cost of health care. Um, there's basic logic behind this. The Healthcare Act has this uh, tax that will go after large insurance companies. However, they're just going to pass it down to our consumers. It, to make it worse, the government is also adding, um, added, requiring the insurance plans to have added benefits. But then keep, the Act also states that the premiums or prices should be low. That's like saying, let's add all these new features to your phone, but keep the price the same. That's not going to work, and the insurance companies are going to lose money. Thus, the prices will only stay low if it passes in court, which it probably won't. Chew on these statistics. Um, Obama's administration's own actuary said that, report, Richard Foster reported that uh, individuals would have to pay $265 more on health care by 2019. Multiply that by four and the average household has to pay about $1,060 more a year. Other studies from Congressional Budget Office show that you'll have to pay $2,100 more per year by 2016. Put that over a 10 year span, you could buy a new car with that kind of money. But maybe money is not that important to you. We'll also consider that it will also lower the quality of care. Economics 101 tells us that in order for the government to provide more medical services and keep prices low, they have to ration the health care. People don't like rationing, especially when it comes to our health care. Just take the Massachusetts reform as an example, which passed in 2006. They also mandated all the same provisions as our national one. It was supposed to be a carbon copy of this one. But however, as you see the outcome, state regulators are already proposing rationing as a source to a solution. Boston Globe reports that hospitals and doctors may be put on budget and patients may find it harder to get procedures they want. One cross problem that hasn't been addressed in either reform was a defensive medicine based on a broken malpractice system. This basically means that hospitals and research institutes conduct all these unnecessary tests and studies instead of focusing on quality care and safe medical practices. Here are some surveys done by Towers Watson on employees. And they all majority think that the health care will reduce available benefits and worsen the quality of their care. <coughs> this includes your parents' health insurance benefits, which in turn is your benefits. It's true that our national health care system is like in ruins. However, there are better alternatives than the current one. For example, first we could dismantle the current legislation and repeal the individual mandate, which 21 states argue is unconstitutional. According to a CNN poll, 60% of the people disapprove of this uh, individual mandate, and only 38% actually approve. And New York Times reports recently that Obama has challenged the, the state governors to pr propose a new solution instead of his one, and he's upping the date so where they can uh, submit these solutions. Logical improvements already been uh, proposed by Representatives Dave Camp and Paul Ryan, such as having high-risk pools, which means that the ones with people with pre-existing conditions can put be put in the high-risk pool and still get coverage, while uh, low-risk people can be in a separate one. It wouldn't be fair for healthy people and people with cancer to be in the same pool because the prices will be the same. Also, we can extend the uh, health insurance across state lines. But like we do with all other insurance. It's, this would eliminate any monopolies within a state. These are just some ideas. If you have any other, you can contact our local congressman, Allison Schwartz, by email or mail. To sum it up, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act is unconstitutional. It will raise the prices and lower the quality of the health care. America is a democracy, thus we the people should have a say about our health care. One complaint may not seem a lot, but it's one closer step to having a better health care. 
We will all need our heads examined if we're going to let this health care plan carry on, literally and figuratively.